Now, only two days ago, legendary DJ Steve Wright suddenly passed away at the age of 69. But already the reasons for his passing uh, are beginning to come to light. The BBC's talent cull of older presenters was so vicious that even titans within the broadcaster were vulnerable. Um, joining me now from his holidays is the Sun's TV critic, Ali Ross. Ali, welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. Very kind of you to spare some time for us on your, on your holes. Um, Having shocking. a vacation, Mike, so it's, 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 Even it's easier. no problem. Even easier. I presume you're yeah. saving up for the Euros in the summer, eh? Yeah, and I've just got a ticket for the Germany game, so I'm uh, over the moon, Absolutely, Brian. absolutely. Shocking story this week um, to learn that Steve Wright uh, was discovered to have passed away on Monday. Uh, in his flat in, in London. Um, the Sun yesterday with the story saying that, you know, uh, a friend a friend of his uh, saying he probably died of a broken heart because he was so upset about the way the BBC treated him. I mean, he was perhaps one of the biggest names that they decided that they didn't want really anymore in the main schedule. Mm. Yeah, um, Paul O'Grady and, and Ken Bruce, two of the others, absolute legends of broadcasting. Sadly, Ken's the only one that's still with us now. Right. Uh, but BBC Radio does this from time to time. It just self-sabotages. And I think there's a couple of reasons behind it. The, f the first being, I, I don't think it's ever really got over the smashy and nicey thing, mm. which is famously the, the only piece of satire that's ever had an effect. Um, and it, it pointed out that all the original DJs from Radio 1 were still there almost 20 years later, and yeah. it's, it's very much had that on its mind ever since. But, of course, added to this is the fact that it's got a whole dose of wokery since then as well. So yeah. someone like Steve, who ticked no boxes but was loved by the listeners, yeah. um, probably didn't stand a chance, no matter how many millions of listeners he got. And it, it, it's a tragedy that he should go in these circumstances with praise ringing in his ears from the very same BBC bosses who got rid of him 18 months ago. Yeah, who were sort of wielding the knife, as it were. Mm. Yeah. E e exactly. They're, they're shameless as well. And it's, I gather it's gone down very badly at BBC HQ, where the woman who basically gave him the bump yes. was the first person paying tribute on email. This is Helen... Helen um... Helen what, Thomas. Helen Thomas, exactly right. Yeah. I mean, his, his brother was also quoted today. He, he gave an interview um, to the Daily Mail uh, in which he said that, you know, um, Steve was one of those guys who didn't look after himself terribly well. He wasn't very healthy. He'd struggled with his weight and all that sort of thing as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, he was a, a bit of a lonely character at the end, I guess. Um, I, I, I'd hate to think that. Um, he, he seems to have been genuinely liked, which you certainly couldn't say about all of that old Radio 1 crowd. No. Um, famously, they all, well, not all of them, but most of them absolutely loathed each other, despite the sort of the smashy and nicey appearance in public. But St Steve Wright, and I, I know this from speaking to people at the BBC, was genuinely thought of as a decent guy um eccentric like a lot of djs but um his longevity speaks for itself you don't last that long in the business um if you've uh, turned people over and generally behave badly so it, i think it was to his great credit mm. and um you don't like to think of anyone dying lonely and heartbroken like that. Yeah. So I, I think we'd probably best wait and see to uh, as what comes out in the next few weeks uh, about this. No, sure. And meanwhile, the BBC have announced, I saw just the other week, that they're launching some new radio stations, bizarrely. They're launching some digital... Uh, <laughs> not only, enough, some digital-only version of Radio 3, um, which is going to be an add-on, they say, um, and a couple of others, which... And you just think, you know, given the amount of listeners that they're losing, is this really where they want to be spending their time? Yeah. Uh, well, when, when Steve Wright left that show, they immediately lost a million people. Yeah. And I, I've had conversations with... Bizarre conversations with PRs from Radio 1 in the past where they where they've got rid of really high-profile DJs and said, well, the good news is they were a million listeners we didn't want. And you say, what, what, what planet is this yeah. company operating on that you don't want people to listen to right. your product? 
you're just pursuing this cult of youth at all costs. Mm. And in the case of Steve Wright, it cost them a million listeners. Now, they're lucky because they're propped up by this outdated license yeah. fee that they can get away with this um, for the moment. For the You'd moment. like to think eventually reality and time will catch up with them. Yeah. And that they have to be responsible to the market in some respect. Well, this Because this thing. is unsustainable. It is unsustainable. And I think the most recent Rajar showed um, that the gap now between commercial radio and the BBC is even bigger than it's ever been because commercial radio yeah. continues to grow and BBC radio continues to shrink. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't surprise me one little bit. Um, uh, they, they seem to have forgotten all the basic lessons of, of, of giving the people what they want. And there's so many of them, these high-profile figures have left acrimoniously. And every time one of them goes like this, then the BBC come out and tell, tell us how well-loved they were. Well, we knew that, yeah. but did you? Clearly yeah. not. It, it will is... happen again, I'm sure. I'm sure it will. Ali, great to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. We've got to run, I'm afraid. Thank you. Uh, see you soon.